Well, all right, guys, I've been busy making blanks, getting ready for Maker Central. So these are all going to be going over with me. Uh, they're going to be mostly for demos. Uh, I'm going to do a few of them myself. Uh, but I have one project that I've kind of thought of in my mind that I wanted to turn while I'm over there uh, at the Easywood Tools booth. And uh, I've had these peacock feathers for probably two years now. Uh, Rex sent them to me, and I feel bad that I haven't actually done anything with them, but I didn't want to just do do whatever with them. I wanted to, you know, kind of, I wanted that special project. I, I wanted something to kind of pop into my brain, and I finally have had that moment. I want to make, using this uh, this silicone cake mold, I want to make a platter blank using the feathers. So that's what we're going to do today. All right, we got the first layer poured. Uh, now all we gotta do is wait for the most part uh, for it to firm up so we can pour that second layer and, and put our peacock feathers in. Uh, the only other thing I'm gonna do to this is hit it with the, the torch every once in a while uh, just to get rid of those surface bubbles. But uh, like I said, now it's just a waiting game. All right, so we got our second layer poured. Now, I had some issues with this, uh, and it was my fault, pretty much. So uh, what ended up happening was it started kind of smoking. It was it was overheating, basically. And a couple of things are going on. Now, this is quite a bit of resin. The first layer was 780 grams, something like that, and then the second one was 900 and something. So what happened was the first layer was fine. It didn't overheat or do anything. I didn't see any problems. That, that worked fine. It was still a pretty thin layer. It was only about three-quarter inches thick. Um, and pretty wide, so it didn't overheat. However, it was still generating a lot of heat when I poured the second layer on, which was 900 and something grams. I think it would have been fine even with the 900 grams had that first layer cooled off. So I'm waiting for the blank to cool off a lot <laughs> before I pour this third one. But uh, just, just kind of a reminder, it's something I'm not really used to with the, the, the overheating. I usually use a Lumalite Clear Slow Set, which is it was formulated to pour in large quantities all at once. Um, it's formulated to uh, generate less heat. That's why it doesn't overheat. So uh, Liquid Diamonds is not formulated necessarily to pour gigantic pours. And then when you stack on, you know, something that's hot and then, you know, a bunch of resin, it's going to overheat. So just kind of a little bit of a warning there if you're doing something like this. Uh, it's better to let that first layer kind of cool off <laughs> quite a bit before you pour the second layer on. Now, again, I think this blank's still okay. I don't see any cracks or there's no problems with it. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to pour that third layer, adding a little bit of the purple pearl to it, and then the blank will be ready to rock.
it sat overnight, it's time to demold this puppy and see how it turned out. Well, all right, we got it demolded. It took a little bit. My silicone mold uh, bit the dust. Now, what happened was that second layer, it overheated and uh, it got so hot that it actually melted into the silicone. So that's not very good. I, I really didn't, I just wasn't thinking about how much resin I was pouring at once uh, which e with each one of these layers. Um, I think that I'm, I'm so used to using Alumilite Clear Slow Set for large blanks. That's what I always use. And you just don't have to worry about overheating or anything like that with, with uh, that product. Now, Liquid Diamonds, uh, it, honestly, the first layer seemed to be okay. I, it didn't seem like it overheated or did anything wrong or different. Um, so you can actually pour quite a bit with Liquid Diamonds, but what I didn't really account for was I poured that second layer so fast after I had poured the first one that the first layer was just still super hot. Like it was still you know exotherming kind of at the peak then I poured 900 and something grams on top of that. It just, it really wasn't the right way to do this. Um, so I, I think in the future, I think it's better uh, for me anyway, I think I would be better off actually just using a Lumalite Clear Slow Set. And the, the reason I went with Liquid Diamonds for this was in my head, I'm thinking, okay, well, you know, 45 minute to an hour working time per layer, you know, really all I have to do is wait about an hour or something uh, and then pour the second one not thinking about how high the temperature would be on that first layer or the, the previous layer. So, uh, you know, in my head, I'm thinking it'll only take me about three or four hours to get all of this poured using liquid diamonds as compared to, you know, I got to wait at least two hours uh, with a Lumalite Clear Slow Set uh, before I can pull it out of the pressure pot each time. Well, in the end, really what you need to do with, with a, a normal resin like this, uh, with, with liquid diamonds, I would have had to wait hours for it to cool back down to, to room temperature. Um, and even at that, this middle, you know, 900 and something grams of, of the clear, that still might have overheated. That's, that's a lot of resin to be pouring at once with liquid diamonds. So um, I think I want to try this again uh, uh, using a Lumalite Clear Slow Set, just kind of see how that goes. I think I'm going to have... I'm not going to run into that overheating issue, uh, but I'm going to have to wait to get a, another one of these molds before I can try that out. Uh, but I will be turning this. I, I don't think there's any problems with it. It did overheat and, and I didn't do this as well as I could have, but I actually think the blank is okay. I'm not, there's no visible problems with it uh, that I can see. So I'll be turning this at Maker Central coming up May 11th and 12th. I'm not sure which day or whatever, but I'll be turning this at the Easy Wood Tools booth, uh, so I can't wait to see how this thing turns out. I'm hoping that my vision in my head uh, will come to fruition when I actually get this thing turned up. Uh, and if you can't make it out to, to Maker Central, I will be doing some live streaming. I'm not sure if I'll live stream me turning this or not, but um, I'll be doing some live streaming from, from the event, and also I'll be posting. So, you know, whatever comes of this, uh, if you can't make it, it'll be on social media so you can kind of see what's going on. So, uh, kind of an informational, educational video. Uh, like I said, a little bit of an experiment. Uh, had to remind myself of some things, learn some lessons with this one. But it was really fun to make. And like I said, I think in the end, I think we're okay. I think the blank will turn out all right. Uh, and so I can't wait to, to turn this thing up. So, uh, like I said, hopefully you guys, if you're anywhere near Birmingham, England, May 11th and 12th, I hope you can make it out to Maker Central. It's going to be an amazing event. Uh, hope to meet you. If, if you're out there and you see me, come up, say hi. Don't be shy. Um, that's why I'm going there is to, to meet everybody, you know, over uh, across the pond and, and just kind of have a good time. So I'll be doing a couple of demos uh, at the Easy Wood Tools booth. I'll probably be kind of hanging around the Easy Wood Tools booth most of the time, both days. But I am doing a, a demo at House of Resin uh, talking about stabilizing. And then I'm also doing a Q&A panel on one of the main stages uh, with Pam Harris, 
Jim Overton and Jake Thompson. It should be a really fun time. So again, hope to meet you and see you guys over at Maker Central. Uh, if this is your first time on my channel, we do all kinds of resin casting projects, tips and tricks and experiments around here. So if you're interested in that, definitely hit that uh, subscribe button. And uh, don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get notified when new videos get posted. Don't forget, I do live streams every Friday at 3 p.m. 3 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, so if you're interested in the long form, you know, kind of watching the whole process and hanging out, having some fun on a Friday evening or afternoon, depending on where you're at, uh, definitely stop by there. And if you're thinking about getting into resin casting, but you're not really sure where to begin, uh, check out my ebook, The Beginner's Guide to Resin Casting. It answers all those beginner's questions like, you know, what kind of resin should I use? What, what tools and supplies do I need? How does it all work? That kind of stuff. It's kind of a, a simple overview so that you can kind of get going with resin casting, get in the shop and actually start making stuff uh, right away rather than kind of wondering, you know, where do I even begin? So check that out. It's available on my website if you're interested. Uh, so until next time, guys, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.